So now we're going to discuss uh, relations and functions on sets. What we're trying to do is eventually we're thinking about how one can establish or define all mathematical objects using sets. So what we're going to do is start off just very slowly just seeing how certain basic mathematical concepts can be defined using just the theory of sets. And we'll talk first of all about relations and then later on, perhaps not today, we'll discuss functions. So a relation on a set, I may just have a set here, let's say A, and there are various objects inside the set. <coughs> so it may be that this object is related to this one, this is related to this one, perhaps it's this related back, this is related to this, <coughs> this is related to here. So I just think of it as a relation is occurring between, well in the first instance just between two objects in the, in the set. So we write for a relation R, I could just say <coughs> something like x is related to y, right? if I've got two objects x and y in here and they're related in this way. Another alternative way is perhaps to illustrate x is being related to y like this. If the relation is an ordering, <laughs> it might be more common to write x is, now there's a curly less than here, y here. So I think of orderings as relations, but there are other kinds of relations that may not be orderings here. Um, a relation with this kind of strict less than symbol, I, well I've used the word strict, we're thinking this does not hold between x and x. Right? Somehow this is x is strictly smaller than y in one sense, so I can't have x and both on both sides of this here. So we're going to have that this denotes always a strict ordering. And by that I mean we cannot have that x is strictly less than x in this case. Uh, it may be that an ordering is another common property of orderings is that they're transitive. I could have uh, x given x and y and z in some set um, A. We might have that x is less than y and y is less than z and then we would say this implies that x comes before z. So then I would say that strict less than is a transitive ordering on A. So we then say there's a strict transitive ordering. And th there are many properties that you can have for orderings, and the top of the page they lists about half a dozen of them. I'm not expecting you to memorize these names or these definitions for what they are, but one or two will play a prominent role in what we're, what we're doing. So, for example, I could take, uh, I, let z be the power set of some set um, C say here. <clears throat> so just to keep it interesting let's assume that C is not empty 
although the definitions I give will also be true for C as being empty. But it's, let's think of it as being not, not empty here. <coughs> then if I take the subset relation on Z, this is symmetric. Because if I've got some u that is a subset of c, in other words, u is in z, right? Then actually, u is a subset of itself, right here. And it's transitive. If I've got u and v and y <coughs> in z, and if, y, if u is a subset of v and v is a subset of y, then trivially u is a subset of y. So with my relation as subset or equals, then it's transitive as well. <coughs> Uh, if I say it has to be a strict proper subset here, then of course it's no longer symmetric because I don't have that u as a proper subset of itself. Right? So this would go. <coughs> On the other hand, it's still transitive. If this is a proper subset, this is a proper subset, this is a proper subset here. <coughs> It's uh, not a connected, uh, what I've just rubbed out, the subset relation on a power set, it's not a connected thing. I don't pick any two things in the power set of C. It's not necessarily the case that either of them is a subset of the other. So two things may not be related at all. We would then say it's a partial order. It only orders some of the things. So the main definition here is 110. <coughs> A strict partial order. So I'll write PO for partial order here. <coughs> On the set Z is a relation. Because I'm thinking of it as an ordering, I will use this curly less than. Right here is a relation on Z. That is, <coughs> uh, so what have I, which order have I got down here? It's irreflexive meaning it's not reflexive. So that's saying for all x in z it's not the case, a logical symbol not, that x comes before itself. Right. So we would perhaps more usually or mathematically just write that. Right. So x can't come before itself, but it's transitive. I take three things, I rubbed it out, I'm not going to write it up again. I take three things in Z, U, V and Y. If U comes before V, V comes before Y, then U comes before Y. I say strict here, but actually the convention will be if I don't say strict, it is supposed to be strict. Right? So in the definition you'll see I put brackets around here. That means I can just save myself from breath and writing by saying strict each time. Right? The other kind of ordering would be a non-strict one. A non-strict version 
of this here can be defined and I would write strictly less than or equals here and you can guess again what is coming here I'll say that x comes before or equals y if and only if x equals y or x is strictly less than y. So from this I can define the weaker version less than or equals. Right? And if I have less than or equals I could define a strict less from it here. I define the strict less by saying I'll define x to be strictly less than y to mean it's not equal to y and x is less than or equal to y. Okay, the kind of things that one does in an analysis class, talking about orderings, we talk about least upper bounds, greatest lower bounds, and so on. So let's just um, for a moment think about this. So we can say that. Uh, an element, I've got an ordering here, x less than. So we'll say that little x sub zero in here, we'll say it's the least element. Of x, or the minimum. of x under the ordering and it just means of course everything comes later. If for all y <coughs> if for all y and x here I'm going to have that x0 is less than or equals y. We'll say that something is a minimal element if I pick any y in x then it's not the case that y comes before x zero. A minimal element. It means there's nothing earlier than x0. But it might be that an ordering has many minimal elements. They may be unrelated to each other. <laughs> so we define a greatest element right, and maximal elements in an analogous way right, to minimal elements. So I'm now just talking from the top of page 10. <clears throat> we can talk about least upper bounds. So if this is a partial ordering, so it's strict, that's implicit in the symbol there, on a set X, and if I've got a non-empty subset of x, y, here, then I say a z in x is a lower bound for y if, if anything that's in y is either z or comes after z here.
an element z in x is a greater to lower bound so common abbreviation glb here or infimum another synonym here if two things z is a lower bound and of course it has to be greatest z prime is any other lower bound or any lower bound For y, then z prime is comes before z, or either equals z or comes earlier than z here. So this would make z the greatest lower bound here. And just as we have, or we saw from the in the first year analysis in the real numbers, it may be that the the set can have a greatest lower bound, right? But it, it needn't necessarily be in that set. So to go with the notions of lower bounds, the concepts of upper bounds. And suprema so another word for suprema is least upper bound okay so these are defined analogously Okay, so unlike uh, minimal elements or maximal elements, if there is a greatest lower bound or an infimum, then it's unique. If an infimum for y under this less than ordering exists, then it's unique. Similarly for supremum. But it's an if, right? It may not exist in any particular ordering that we're thinking of. On the other hand, if Y has a least element, by the very use of the English there, that's going to be an element of y. I'm going to think about maps between orderings. And this is definition 112. So if I've got a map between one partially ordered set here and here's another one so I distinguish the orderings the curly less than this is a comma by a one and a two down here then we'll say that f is order preserving If it sends things in the right direction.
I pick any two things in X here. If X comes before Z in this ordering, then it better be the case that F of X comes before F of Z in the ordering over here. So F preserves the order. second part of the definition says not just that this is order preserving but an isomorphism is going to be a bijection between here and here okay, which is order preserving so I've got two orderings x and y are order isomorphic and again perhaps we may drop the word order when the context is, is, is clear okay. they're order isomorphic if there's an order preserving map from x to y, which is also a bijection. So it's one to one and on to, from x to y, in this situation here. And we can use the same definitions if the orderings are not strict. if the orderings are non-strict ones. Okay, so plenty of examples of things like this. I can take the natural numbers and I use the usual ordering here. Right. then this is a strict ordering here and it's actually order isomorphic to, and I could just write down here the set of evens the usual ordering here so this is the numbers 0 2 4 6 8 10 and so on and the order isomorphism is the obvious one where what i do i send k to 2 of k so this is the obvious here order isomorphism Okay, so this is a bijection between the naturals and then the evens. Um, so this is one example, another example. Here's a different f, let f of k be k minus one. Then f takes the integers again with the ordinary ordering here integers to itself i don't always write this little subscript for the uh, set here when the ordering is the natural one here so this is an order preserving map and again it's a bijection it's one to one and it just shifts all the integers left by one unit so i write that it's it's order preserving here but also it's an isomorphism and we often use the isomorphism symbol here so I might write 
this isomorphism symbol here between these two orderings. And if I want to emphasize the F, I might write it down and do this. If F is an order isomorphism. Now, the, these particular examples of the integers here and the natural numbers above, they are strung out in a linear order. Right? There's nothing here about linear orderings in particular right, that uh, restricts us to, we can have order isomorphisms between orderings where things are not particularly uh, not at all well ordered, uh, not at all strictly ordered. <laughs> yeah. R for partial orders. Right. Later we'll think about what happens when we have linear orderings, which we, which we should call total orderings. So the theorem that then follows just says that actually any partially ordered set I can think of as actually being the strict subset relation for a set of an element, set of elements from a power set. So let's see what this says. So it's a representation theorem. For partial orders. So what does it say? If I've got X with this less than is a partial order. Then there's a set Y consisting of subsets of X which is such that X this less than is isomorphic to y, sorry, it actually says in the theorem x less than or equals is isomorphic to y with the subset relation. Now this is about any partial order at all. So what this is saying is that <clears throat> I can always think of a partial order as actually being set inclusion for some family of sets. So I can always represent a partial order as a subset relation on a carefully chosen field of sets here. So let's see how this works. Again, I'm just going to uh, just kind of copy straight out here from, from the notes. So there's nothing, nothing new in here. But this is an idea that we will come back to <clears throat> of taking segments of a partial ordering. So I take a, a set X here. So perhaps my partial order, it might look a bit like a tree, for example, it could be a family tree, right? Or it may have different branches in it. Right? So here is a partial order 
here's a minimal element, here's a minimal element of the partial order. There's no minimum element because we've got these two minimal elements here. So if I think of strict less than as going up the page here, So, so I pick an X example, here's, a, here's X. So I define X uh, superscript X, too many X's here, but I'll stick with the notation I had in the notes. It's the collection of things, it's the collection of the Z's where Z is less than or equal to x. So in this particular drawing here, it would consist of this and this and this. So it's the lower part of the ordering that comes below and up to, but includes x itself. Right, so if I pick two things, if x is different from y, then these two are different because here the topmost element is x and here the topmost element is y and these are different. So these are different sets. So I've already got the assignment from x to this initial segment is already a one-to-one -one map. Okay, so let, let Y here be the collection of these initial parts of the ordering. So Y looks like the collection of all of these Bits. I just pick a point in the tree and I take everything that's below it. Pick a point in the tree, everything that's below it. So this is a typical element of Y. It's a subset of the ordering here. So I take all of these initial segments here. So then we have that X is less than or equal to Y. Right? if and only if x initial segment that it determines here is part of the initial segment that y determines. This is because if I've got an x and here is a y that's above it, right? this is saying the things that are below x, including x, are contained in all the things that are below y. And likewise, if I've got two segments like this, I must have, if this one comes, if this is a strict subset of this one, then it must be determined by an X lower down the chain here. So this is, so I just said, f of x to be this initial segment, this is the isomorphism that I'm after. We have that x with the less than, f gives us an isomorphism to the y I've defined using the subset relation here. Okay, this is kind of to introduce the idea of looking at initial segments of orderings here. I would actually say that this theorem itself is not terribly useful. All it does is just give a way of reinterpreting what an ordering is. It doesn't really give us any more information. And a good representation theorem in mathematics should give us some extra insight or information that we can use later on. But in fact, uh, this particular representation theorem is not, not so useful in that sense. Now, a lot of the time we are going to be interested in 
strict orderings where we don't have trees, but everything looks like a line, right? or a line growing up, up the page. So this is definition 114. Here. So a relation less than here on X is a strict total ordering. If it's a strict partial ordering which is connected, so I define what the word connected means here. This is going to say I pick any two objects from the field of the ordering. For any x and y here, either x equals y, or x comes before y, or y comes before x. So the usual less than relation on the natural numbers or the integers, <laughs> or indeed on the reals, these are strict total orderings because everything is pictured as coming in one line. So again, if I use less than or equals here, then the ordering is non-strict. So then in this case, what we would say is for any x and y, in x here, either x is less than or equal to y or y is less than or equal to x. So note some things. If F here If this is an order preserving map here between strict total orders, then it must be one to one. So I just leave you to check that. It just means going back to the definition and just seeing if we've got strict total orders here, I can't have two elements here going to the same place over here and still call this an order preserving map. So it just follows from the definitions. Okay. Very important definition for later, and I won't discuss it an awful lot just at the moment, is the notion of a well order. 
it's a convenient place to, to introduce it. So what I've got is a set A or a class, in fact, with a strict less than on it. Sorry, let's say, stick to the wording of the definition. So this here is a well order, well ordering. And it's a strict total ordering with special property. So strict total ordering. And the second condition is the key one. I've got a non-empty subset of A, the field of the ordering, then Y has a minimum under the less than. So got a less than the least element. And we this is uh, has a name for itself. In this case, we write that A with less than it's in the class of well orderings, and W O therefore well ordering. The second definition, which we won't use so much of, but is about partial orderings. Partial order are on a set A, we say it's a well founded relation, well founded ordering or relation. Again, for any subset which is not empty, contained in A, then A has an R minimal, sorry, Y has an R minimal element. So, Two here is useful when the ordering is perhaps a tree-like ordering. It's not necessarily a linear ordering. But the ones which we'll really encounter and study are those that come in part one, are the strict total orderings. So examples. Right, so the or example here is the natural numbers under their less than ordering. This is a well order. Why? Well, it's a strict total ordering. But if I take any non empty collection of natural numbers, it's got a least element. And that's what it would mean to be a well order. So if you're asked to verify something as a well order, you've got two things to do. You have to say that the ordering is a strict total order. B, if I take any non-empty Y contained in N, then Y has a least element. 
by the least number principle. So this would justify the fact that it's a well order. On the other hand, if you look at the integers, this is not a well order. Again, why? It's still a strict total ordering, but for example, the non-negative integers have no least element. then y has no less than least element. And we already saw in the first lecture that the reals, for example, this is not a well order under the usual. Keep the order in the reals, this is also not a well order. So note some things about well orders. So to avoid trivialities, let's suppose A itself is non-empty. Then if I've got that this is a well order, then A of course is a non-empty subset of A. So the definition of well order says that A has a least element. A zero, say, call it A zero. <laughs> now if A has got more than one element, a0 is not all of A. So I could take A and I re remove A0 from it. So this is A minus this set. So this means it takes all the elements of this set away from this set. So this here is a subset of A. If this is non empty, it's also going to have a least element. So it has a least element. A1, say. So I now know I've got A0 and I've got A1, like this. So I just repeat. Take away A0 and A1 from A. Again, if this is non-empty, I'm going to find some A2, which is the least element in here. So this process will go on right? as long as when I keep taking more and more elements away, there's still something left here. So what we've got here is whenever I, it's not just that any non-empty subset of A has got a least element. What we've got is that any element here of A always has a, an immediate successor. So the upshot here is that any element of A, uh, let's call it C say, has an immediate successor. just like the natural numbers. I 
I just look at the elements let y be here, the elements, um, let's say d in A, such that c comes before d. Now, if y is empty, this means that c is the last element of the ordering. But if y is, sorry, if y is not empty, then it has at least element, let's call it C prime, which comes after C. So C prime is the immediate less than successor of C prime. So thinking about this, we see that A has got a, a first element, right, where nothing is less than it. Then we have successor, successor, successor going like this. And every element, has an immediate successor, right? a unique immediate successor. And if A was just the natural numbers, I could say that every element other than zero has an immediate predecessor. But in general, for well orderings, this is not necessarily the case. It may not be the case that every element has an immediate predecessor. There's nothing in the definition uh, that requires or enforces this. So it may not be the case that every element has an immediate less than predecessor. So this is perhaps all we will say about uh, well orders at the moment, but they're going to come back and be extremely important in, in chapter three. Okay, so next time we will talk about uh, ordered pairs, Cartesian products and functions, and we'll see how we can define these things, uh, these mathematical objects in said theory. Okay, until next time.